Evidence of Ancient Machining Technology in Egypt This is a new book uh, that I've just written, and it presents the evidence. At the Aswan Quarry in southern Egypt, we find, among other things, the unfinished obelisk, which would have weighed 1,200 tons had it been completed. Quite an amazing achievement, and something beyond the capability of the dynastic Egyptians, because Egyptologists tell us that these stone pounders were what were used to create. Then also at Elephantine Island, we find this amazing rose granite single piece of stone shaped with amazing ability and other examples at Elephantine Island as well. Just to the north, we have the Tomb of the Nobles. These, of course, were tombs, but these chambers were cut into sandstone. Not just columns inside, but hallways extending 30, 40 feet. And at the Ramesseum, here we have the kneecap and the foot of a sculpture out of rose granite that weighed supposedly a thousand tons. And nearby, the Colossi of Memnon. The one on the left is basically one single piece of stone weighing 720 tons. The Dendera light bulbs, if they are light bulbs, are very intriguing. Here we see possibly a giant holding one of these. And then nearby at Abydos, these strange figures. As well, the Osirion, again rose granite. And astonishingly, it is several feet lower than the ground at this point. And at Karnak, which is a huge place, we have this massive obelisk out of rose granite. Now, the dynastic Egyptians could have made these columns out of several pieces, but the obelisk? As well, the remains of an obelisk whose core has been destroyed. Some theorize that ancient technology was used here, such as these obvious core drill holes. Now, of course, in modern times we have tube drills, but did the ancient Egyptians have these? Or are we looking at lost ancient technology, much older? And the result of a cataclysm destroyed the culture that made them. As well, the bent pyramid here, which some people believe was an engineering mistake. But you see the fineness of the fit of stones. And also, at Dashur, we have the red pyramid, which we went inside of. How could people possibly think that these were tombs? These baffles obviously were made for acoustic purposes. And Saqqara, where we have these huge boxes at the so-called Serapium. Here the Kemet School is inspecting these. Yusuf Awiyan, the expert, is reading the glyphs. We measured the flatness of the surfaces. This is a perfect 90 degree angle. And how could someone possibly think that these inscriptions were done by the same people who made the box? As well, this schist disc in the museum in Cairo, recorded as being a flower pot or fruit plate, but obviously technology. And at Abu Sir, we have Yusuf Awiyan inspecting what clearly is a saw-shaped piece of basalt. And as well, we have more curious drill holes like this. In detail, you can see how the drill entered the hard granite. And as well, we have Yusuf inspecting a shaped piece of hard stone. And again, more of these drill holes. At Abu Ghurab, this huge hotep composed of five pieces of stone, obviously from the same quarry, more evidence of tube drilling. And also these amazing bowls, thought by some to be for 
ritual blood of bulls, but why is the hole on the side and not the bottom? And there are also other bowls which have three holes on the side, not the bottom. The Giza Plateau, we see the obvious quarrying of megalithic stone for the construction of the Great Pyramid and others. And what remains of the casing stone, you can see, is a perfect fit. Most people don't know that the Great Pyramid actually has eight sides, but it's very subtle. And here again, we see saw marks in basalt, which is almost as hard as diamond. The Dynastic Egyptians could not have cut this stone. And in the interior of the Great Pyramid, again, this baffling system in the Ascending Passage, the Grand Gallery. We see the weathering of the stone of the Sphinx. Precision here with Chris Dunn, within two ten thousandths of an inch of perfectly flat. Massive col uh, columns of basalt, or sorry, granite, brought from 500 miles away. And Yusuf showed me obvious evidence of tunnels and shafts descending into the bedrock of the Giza Plateau. We went down into the third level, and obviously water was once running through the system. So here is my book, and it's available at Amazon.com under my name, Brian Forster.